Today I have prepared two homilies. Justin takes the other one, finishes early, then I take the second one. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this is the third Sunday of the scrutiny for the preparation of converts and the final Sunday of Lent before the beginning of Holy Week. Hence, the liturgy of the world of today speak of recreation, resurrection, and the new life. In our first reading from the Old Testament, Prophet Ezekiel is taken from the chapter about pouring forth the Spirit upon the dry bones in the valley of his vision. The prophet speaks of restoration through an act of God, through the Spirit, and that it was through him that the people first were saved from their oppression in Egypt, and by his power they will be saved again and restored as the people of God. The symbolic meaning of the reading is the resurrection of the people to new life, a theme clearly reiterated in succeeding apocalyptic literature, and finally present in the death and resurrection of Jesus. Our second reading from the Paul to the Romans states that through Christ the whole person of the believer is saved, raised up, and redeemed. The realm of the flesh is the realm to be left behind, and the realm of the spirit is where true life is to be found. But there is no Hellenistic dichotomy here between flesh and the spirit. Since the believer lives with the spirit of God and flesh in his body or her body, so that his or her whole person will live in conformity with that spirit. The indwelling of the spirit refers to the baptism of the person and his consequent moral life. And in our beautiful gospel of today, open up in front of us a scene of unprecedented sorrow. The Lord Jesus receives the message from the sisters of Lazarus, who when confronted with the gravity of his condition, trying the only things possible, they turn to the Lord of whom it was said, everything he dies is good, he makes the deaf hear and the dumb speak, that is in Mark chapter 7, verse 37. It is the cry of each one of us who like their loved one to live forever without ever leaving us. The Lord Jesus then waited. He did not come up immediately when he received the call, but waited a further two days before heading for Lazarus' home. Remember, this is the last miracle he performed before his passion. Even then, he only left with his disciples. When he divinely knew of his friend's death, this particular detail from the Gospel tells us that the Word of God was made man for the love of all of us. Also that his look of love is always upon us, waiting for that meeting of immense joy that will happen in eternity. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, upon Jesus' arrival in Bethany, there was a new apparently inexplicable development in the story. First Mary, then her sister Martha, and behind them all, the Jews who were united with them converged on Jesus with the certainty that if there was a response, to their sorrow, it will come from him. They were not the religious people who were looking to Jesus for a solution. They profoundly accepted Israel's faith in the final resurrection, and so even this event was not ultimately inexplicable. In fact, Martha said to the Lord, I know that my brother will rise again at the resurrection on the last day. However, knowing that in 
relation to the Lord, nothing that was authentically human in them or their trial of sorrow be, will be lost. And prior to that, their only consolation came from the eschatological faith of that time. You even hear when Jesus is conversing with the, with the sister of Lazarus, that there is an element of faith that each and every one of us has. I believe one day we all want to see the Lord, is it? Do you? If Jesus can come in now and say, who wants to come with me to heaven? Will you go? Mm. Probably some of us will say, no, no, yes, we want to go to heaven, but not now. <laughs> we, we will follow you, Jesus, later. In this last time, my dear brothers and sisters, wait quite long before his triumph entered into Jerusalem. Everything seemed to flow to that new reality, inaugurated by the Emmanuel, God with us. Sharing our existence, Jesus has loved us with a supreme passion, with that original love that doesn't seek to possess the heart of the other, but to love it in truth with delicate existence right up to sacrificing himself for us. Who can do that? Can we give our life for our brothers and sisters? Mm, no. If they can be somebody who is coming carrying a gun and say, Father, I pray that we take your life or we shoot them. What do you think will be my answer? <laughs> Probably I'll be the first one to run out. But we always pray for that faith to die for each other. Even if it's been to spread our, to spare our own blood for the salvation of the people of God. Jesus, he was able to be moved by those who were linked to him by time of the most profound friendship, who understood that it could not be anything but God's presence among them. As we hear, I am the resurrection and the life, and whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Jesus asks, do you believe this? And her response is, Lord, yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. Can we have also faith like Martha? Christ then performed the great miracle of Lazarus' resurrection. He announced through the work of the Father that he himself, God made man, is the resurrection and the life. But remember in the past two Sundays, it was the Samaritan woman and last week it was the Moen born blind. And in these once they had encountered Jesus, then they went to announce the good news. They went to call others to come and see the one who has told them, the one who has done wonders in their life. But on this story of Lazarus today, it is different. The Jews are there. And it is the faith of the sister that enabled Jesus to perform this miracle to show the truth that he is indeed the Son of God. The one that we are going to receive at the Eucharist. He is fully present in the Eucharist. That is why we ought to show reverence and respect to the Eucharist. I sometimes even see the young people when they enter church, they also behave like old men and old ladies who cannot genuflect anymore. No, they just do a half genuflection. The young one, okay, I understand the older one. The ladies are so troubled that they are thieves. But do we give the proper reverence in the house of God, where the Eucharist is, where the tabernacle, once we see that red light there, 
we ought to give it respect and reverence because God is there. He is present. He is among us always. The choir always encourage people that when you go to church, at least spend a few minutes before the mass begin. Come tell the Lord what you want, what you need. Come listen to him, speak to him. We can only do that if we spare a little bit of time with him. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, faith with this sign, the word with which he foretold his resurrection, became clearer as Jesus said, I lay down my life that I may take it again, as we read from John 10, verse 17. He really can take up his life again, as he is the word of life. If Lazarus' resurrection didn't stop the Lord's beloved friends from embracing our sister death, as St. Francis of Assisi will say, when God finally called him again from this life, then how much greater is the life that the Lord has earned for Lazarus and every one of us in the Pascal mystery that we are preparing to celebrate a few days from now. My dear brothers and sisters, it was Martha and Mary's faith, even when confronted with Lazarus' death, that gave rise to the extraordinary miracle worked by Christ. This is not only a consoling story narrated in the letter of the Gospel, but it's also accessible to us today in the church from the day of our baptism until when we are incorporated to him by the means of the Spirit that he has given to us. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also, through his Spirit who dwells in you, as we hear from the letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verse 1. So my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us have this faith like Martha and Mary. Let us be zealous and courageous in our faith. And let us not give up when we encounter trial and tribulation as part and parcel of life. But we should always trust that He is always by our side. He is with us until the end of time. 